Have you seen the effects caused all over the world from the summer heat wave? From the International Space Station, scorched land across the planet was clearly visible. Wildfires have devastated thousands and record temperatures have been recorded in Japan, Sydney, Spain, Portugal and the UK. So you have to ask the question, what's going on? Over the past few months, the deadly heat wave has affected every continent on our planet. Crops have failed, drought has occurred, and the result of this unusually warm weather has not only affected our health, but the price of our grocery bill will skyrocket also as a direct result. Wheat found in everything from bread to noodles, biscuits to cereals, beer to cakes. There is no more widely grown staple crop and more than 200 million metric tons trade every year. So when the weather ruins harvest in one spot, it can shock markets and economies around the globe. We will probably be okay though. We are not going to give any shock scenarios here as to what may happen if this continues in the years ahead. At the moment, the reality is that farmers have stockpiled for years and the recent failures are coming on the back of years of better than expected crops so this could just be in a balance on the scene of things. But the warm weather has had its positive effects, in particular on the British Isles, where years of rainy summers have kept hidden a past that nobody anticipated even existed. This has led to experts scrambling to document what has just been discovered. You're gonna like this one, guys. Wait till you hear this. The scorching weeks of the summer of 2018 left crops shriveled and gardens scorched. It has also revealed the lines of scores of archaeological sites across the UK landscape, tracing millennia of human activity, from Neolithic cursus monuments laid out more than 5,000 years ago to the outline of a long-demolished Tudor Hall as its intended replacement. Lost sites have been turning up all over Britain and Ireland, plowed flat at ground level but showing up as parch marks from the air in areas where grass and crops grow at different heights or show in different colors over buried foundation and ditches. A treasure trove of discoveries including ancient field boundaries, lost villages, burial mounds and military structures was revealed recorded during the summer by aerial archaeologists flying over the landscape for historic England who are quoted as saying, the discovery of ancient farms, settlements, and Neolithic curses monuments is exciting. The exceptional weather has opened up whole areas at once rather than just one or two fields, and it has been fascinating to see so many traces of our past geographically revealed. The results are still being assessed, but Damien Grady, the aerial reconnaissance manager for Historical England said, this has been one of my busiest summers in 20 years of flying. Helen Winton, the head of aerial investigation and mapping said it was the best year since 2011, which revealed more than 1,500 sites for the first time. There is particular excitement over four Iron Age square barrows at Pocklington in the Yorkshire Wolds. Their distinctive shape is rare nationally, but others in Yorkshire have also been excavated to reveal spectacular burials with grave goods, including chariots. These discoveries include two cursus monuments near Clifton Rainus on the outskirts of Milton Keynes, which are some of the oldest and most enigmatic prehistoric field monuments in Britain. The long straight-sided enclosures sum up to several kilometers in length and laid out between 6,000 and 5,000 years ago were named by early antiquarians who believed they were used for chariot races but they are now believed by some to have formed part of a ritual processional routes. One of the two discoveries found as part of an aerial photography and laser scanning project in North Bedfordshire had been hidden under a medieval bank which is gradually being plowed away. Among dozens of sites revealed in Cornwall were an unusual prehistoric settlement surrounded by concrete ditches at Lansalis and an Iron Age settlement surrounded by a circular ditch with marks of other circular and rectangular structures within one field at St. Ive, evidence of continuity of settlement over at least 5,000 years. What is believed to be a Roman farm with buildings, fields, and paddocks has shown up at Bicton in Devon and at Stogumber in Somerset, four bronze and Iron Age farms have been spotted, one with signs of having been abandoned and a new settlement built on top. Near Incham in Oxfordshire, features including a circle of pits 
a later burial mounds and traces of a settlement have revealed themselves. They were previously spotted and protected as a scheduled monument, but have been invisible for many years. Crazy, right? Also making the headlines regarding ancient Egypt again, surprise, surprise, the new findings from the University of Copenhagen about this unique collection of papyrus they have in their collection. Though still mostly untranslated, the contents of the ancient text makes for a pretty compelling insight into the dynastic period of ancient Egypt. Now, before we tell you about the supposed unique finds, please bear in mind that mummification was widely practiced in Egypt to the tune of millions of successful processes, so it's not unfathomable that they knew a thing or two about the human body. But anyway, when you hear about the history of science, the focus is often on the Greek and Roman material, but we have Egyptian material that goes much further back. One of these medical texts was written 3,500 years ago when there was no written material on the European continent that is widely accepted. Analyzing this 3,500 year old text is the job of PhD student Sophie Skodjet from the University of Copenhagen. One side of the manuscript describes unusual treatments for eye diseases. The other side describes the ancient Egyptian equivalent of a pregnancy test and scan. The text says that a pregnant woman should urinate into a bag of barley and a bag of wheat. Depending on which bag sprouts first reveals the sex of her child. And if neither of the bags sprout, then she wasn't pregnant. Her research reveals that the ideas recorded in the Egyptian medical text spread far beyond the African continent. Many of the ideas in the medical text from ancient Egypt appear again in later Greek and Roman text. From here, they spread further to the medieval medical text in the Middle East, and you can find traces all the way up to pre-modern medicine, Sophie says. The same pregnancy test used by Egyptians is referred to in a collection of German folklore from 1699 that really puts things into perspective, and it shows that the Egyptian ideas have left traces thousands of years later. Translating the unpublished text is important work, according to Egyptologist Hans Werner Fischer Elfert from the Department of Egyptology, University of Leipzig. We still have a very fragmented knowledge of the natural sciences in ancient Egypt. Therefore, every single contribution is important. Today, there are still a number of sources that theoretically were known by scientists, but still sat dormant in various collections around the world without anyone looking at them in detail. Now the time has come to recognize them. Maybe they will feature them in that fancy new museum that just opened in Egypt. Maybe not. That's it for now, guys. Lost history rediscovered. What do you guys make of these findings? Not exactly the wow factor, but a nice bit of knowledge nonetheless. If any of you are on the BitChute platform, then check out our new channel over there. And if you want to help support our channel in return for some cool gear, then check out our Teesprings. Your support is always appreciated. Comments below, and we can have a chat down there as always. Thank you for watching.